Okay, y'all, so I'm back. Okay, so I'm gonna try to talk to you guys as quickly as I can while um, it's not getting too hot for my phone um, because I'm gonna take it out for a little bit. But I wanted to talk to you guys first about celibacy. Yes, y'all. Um, that's what I opened my Bible today and uh, the Lord led me to celibacy. I couldn't believe it. I was like, out of all things that I wanted to talk about, you want me to talk about celibacy. Okay, all right, fine. I guess I'll talk about it. I don't know. This is probably for somebody. Somebody's probably been asking and wondering, how do you do it? And how does it happen? How do you go about it and, and how do you get to that goal? And so I'm gonna help you. I know because a lot of people see me and they say, Oh my god, you're so beautiful, you're so gorgeous, and you're like, you know, you should have men just devouring you, and you're right, I should, but I don't. Okay, so let me tell you how. Okay, so backstory on some things, okay? So I actually filmed Insecure, mm -hmm, the TV show Insecure. I had a whole entire sex scene with Jay Ellis, and I was celibate. Ooh, let me tell y'all how challenging that moment was because I had practiced celibacy at that moment, probably like a year, and I got booked for that role. And I was like, okay, sexy. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, I've done sex stuff, so I feel like I should be able to do this. Ooh, when you turn it off, you turn it off. So I had turned it off. And so whenever he jumped on top of me, it was literally like, this man pounced on me. I didn't know what to do. I was literally like, oh my God. And then, you know, acting is acting, so you gotta be a little extra because you can't just make things simple as normal because you can't really see it the same way. So he got on top of me and was really acting like he was putting in work, baby. And I was like, Lord, I got deer in the headlights. Get this man on me. You know, but I had to try to stay in character. What an experience, y'all. So don't tell me that you can't. But anyway, I said all that to say that you could do sex scenes, you could do whatever you want to do and still be celibate, okay? So don't let nobody stop you and make you feel like you got to be out here making it pop, lock and drop to do whatever you need to do, okay? You can still be sexy, okay? You can still wear bathing suits, you can still date, you can still do all these things, okay? You can still put on makeup and get cute and be celibate, okay? There is no right or wrong way to practice celibacy. And so for people who think that, you know, because you're a beautiful creature and you, you know, exude sexy that, you know, you're out here hooking up with people, that's not true. You know, it's really what you choose to do and how you choose to open your legs. Okay? All right. So, um, let me dive into some more stories. Okay, so let me get you guys to the beginning of this journey and how this whole thing unfolded and how it started. So people are like, well, how did you start it? What did you do? You know, I was out in the clubs. I was partying. I was having a good time. And not to sit here and say that I was just hook up with whatever because I never just really hook up with whatever. But, you know, if I, you know, like somebody or whatever, you know, you just might happen to hook up or whatever. I don't know. Um, it's been so long. I can't honestly can't tell you exactly all those things. But, um... I can't say that, you know, at one point in time, I was just living life, it, you know, that was cute. I had, you know, friends with benefits. I had, you know, whatever, a boyfriend, whatever, you know, but I got to a place to where I said enough is enough and I didn't want that anymore. And I wanted to prepare myself for a husband and I needed to get rid of all those other people that would be a distraction. Not only were they a distraction for me while I was dating, um, you know, but just even I felt like if I had a husband, I don't want these people to call me. I don't want these people to. Okay, so what I did first, okay, well, let me go ahead back into this real quick. So yeah, so I was dating and I remember I was dating a guy. It was like actually, um, the athlete, if you guys know my stories about you dating the athlete from Seahawks, or whatever. Anyway, so I was dating him. It was a very serious relationship. Um, and I think we were like almost like two years, two and a half years in. And I had an ex that I had saved his name under, I think it was just A. And I don't even remember why I did that particularly. Um, I think I just, I just remember just saving it. We were, we were done or whatever. And I was just like, okay, whatever. He hits me up and whatever. I didn't think anything of it, but just so happened he hit me up while I was like showing my my boyfriend something on my phone, and then the first thing he goes is like, "Who the fuck is A?" And I'm like, "Shit, I don't, I'm like, oh wait, oh yeah, that's that's those friends, <laughs> you know." And so then that was like actually a problem, you know. It started a problem. Okay, 
So yeah, so I saved his name. It was a very bad moment. He saw the, the text message. The text message was innocent, honestly. It was just like, hey, how are you doing? Is everything okay? Um, at that time, I was going back and forth to court over a particular case. And he was just, you know, checking in on that. But unfortunately, it was a very awkward moment because my boyfriend at the time was like, okay, well, who is this random person that's asking you about this? And then you have it saved underneath the A. And I had forgot completely about it. So in that moment, once I, you know, we broke up, it was like probably a year or two later, I realized that in order for me to move forward into a healthy relationship with anybody, I need to cut off all of these old people. I need to cut these soul ties of people that I don't want in my future. And I don't want them interrupting something healthy that I have. And so when I got to that place of realizing that I needed to cut the, the, these dead weight. Okay, so I have to be really quick because I have to go today. Um, it's story time. Okay, so. So yeah, so there we go. So what I did was I went and I sent a text message um, where I basically said, I release myself from you. I break our soul tie. Um, I'll actually upload exactly what I said. And I sent that to every guy that I ever been with, um, um, especially sexually. Um, uh, people that I knew, uh, friends, uh, even females. Um, and like I said, of course, males of people that I just felt that our journey together was, was was over. It was just done. It was completed. Maybe there was something that they did that I, you know, I never said anything about. But I was like, you know what? Today is the end of our journey. And so I sent everybody this. It was one particular day, and I just sent all that, and I cleared, and I ended all my soul ties. So that's what I would tell you to do. End those soul ties, all of them. Yes, so if there's anybody that you feel has been draining you, making you not feel your best, you feel is an interruption, won't let you go, likes to pop back up every year or two and just to say hi and you're like, bye, go ahead and send them that message and end it and tell them I wish you the best, um, but I love me more and I have to move on to a better place in my life and that will not be with you and be done. Okay, so that's what I did and that was my first part of my journey. Now let me tell you about my second part of the journey as far as really getting through into this part of celibacy. Now this second part, I actually had to use one of my Yoni pearls that you can find on Models Garden. You can also find it at Shape Me Today because I actually sent some to them for them to have at their store too. But you can find those Yoni pearls and I used the Yoni pearls to actually help. Let me tell you how. Okay, so the Yoni Pearl situation, you will use the pearls. You will also connect with God, okay? Because this is something that's very spiritual, you know? And so I prayed over my pearls. I had a moment with God, and I asked God to remove every soul tie that was attached to my womb. Remove every soul tie, remove every negative um, force, uh, particle, uh, demonic, uh, spirit attachment, anything that is not of God, please remove that from this womb and let me purge this okay so I did that it was like a fast for my vagina you know and I went three days I left my pearl in for three days I meditated on God's word I prayed to God every day and I just went through the journey I drank my water and I just went through the journey and I just purged and purged and purged and my God what an experience that's all I can say is you'll experience it too ladies when you try it but it was okay so my phone is overheating but i didn't want to stop this conversation so after you go ahead and you do that you will purge and just understand ladies your first purge is quite alarming every woman is different you can find a lot of things that you didn't even know was going on with your vagina that goes on with it um some people have had cysts come out fibroids come out i mean you name it come out okay for me on the other hand i didn't have anything too crazy thank the lord um but i did purge a lot and um i purged right away as soon as i put those things in i was like what's going on i was like wow this feels very medicated and very uh mentally down there and it was a very interesting experience the first day you know it was just very uh wet and i was just like okay 
so yes my second day was a little bit um crampy i was like oh my gosh why my stomach cramping so bad third day i was just like okay what's happening here you know and then um you know i started to notice certain things when i was wiping and i was like okay what is this stuff you know um and then once i took the pearl out then i was able to see all of this stuff you know um and it's basically like the skin and just whatever toxins that are in the lining of that vagina in the womb it's going to just purge it out you know so um you know depending on whatever you have going on you know maybe it's bv or what whatever for me at that time i didn't have anything but it was interesting to just see how i wasn't even being sexually active i didn't do anything but i had never cleaned my vagina in that way in my entire life um and so that was the first time of having like that thorough cleaning and it was such an amazing experience i felt like a million bucks after Right, so after that, it was three days, so I took another week off to just let all of that stuff come out, you know? Um, you know, you're not supposed to dish or anything like that. Um, just let it purge on its own. So I let it do it for a week. Um, but after a week, I was like, okay, I need to make sure all this stuff that's in there is out. So I did do, uh, um, I, I, I don't do uh, Summer's Eve or any of that stuff. I keep everything natural. So I did a little bit of water in a dish and I just, you know, and filter, you know, uh, purified water, bottled water. I don't use any faucet water. Um, and then I went ahead and just, you know, cleaned it out up in there and just kind of, you know, released whatever else that was still in there that I just couldn't flow out naturally on its own. Um, and so I just did that. And that was just a beautiful moment for me. Um, but needless to say, it was an amuse a, a, a amazing, beautiful journey from that standpoint on. And the value of how I really understood my womb and my vagina, it just went to another. Okay, so then after I did the dish or whatever, I just felt amazing. Like I literally, my body, everything felt so good. I mean, I felt spiritually better. I felt mentally better. And my womb wholeheartedly felt better. My cramps for my periods every month decreased tremendously. Um, I noticed that um, my scent had changed. Um, it really went to just a no scent at all. Um, just very nice and clean and, and pretty, to be very honest. Um, I noticed, uh, you know, that things were a little bit more tighter, more wetter. Um, just, just a very, very, very clean and relaxed and refreshed place for my vagina. Um, I also did not jump in right away and start having sex or things like that. So I feel like I really gave my womb the chance to fully heal and recover and to really become one with God. And it was such a beautiful place. It really was. So, so I share all that with you guys on how to get that vagina. <laughs> Pop, lagging, and drop it, okay? And remove the, all those nasty, toxic exes and people and things and souls that you don't want anything else attached to, you, okay? So that's your uh, trick on how to do that. But let's dive back into this uh, journey of celibacy because that was step number two. Now let's go into step number three of actually making sure that you don't open the legs back up no more, okay? Mm, this is the hard part. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Oh, let me give you a disclaimer. Don't let nobody ever tell you that they just stopped and they just stopped don't get me wrong there might be a person on the soul on this planet that said hey i stopped and never ever did back and dipped back into it and never took their finger to cook it down them up but realistically you say stop and then along your journey you might slip up and and do it again okay so disclaimer but let me go ahead and take okay so i'm back in the sun i gotta be quick because I, go, I gotta go i literally gotta go to start my day it's been Whew, i'm trying to multitask y'all okay but anyway so the hard part Keeping the legs closed. Like really, you have to really wholeheartedly make sure you put yourself in places and positions where you don't open them legs. And this is hard, this is hard. This is where you have to literally know who you are and what you do and how you do things. If you just have a person that likes to take a couple shots and then you be feeling hot and bothered and you wanna go hook up with somebody, then you gotta stop taking shots, okay? If you just have a person that likes to go out to the club and then after the club you like to have a good time, then you need to stop going to the club. Okay? If you just have a person that go on a date and, and, and a man start touching on you and you be ready to just uh, open sesame, then you need to stop going on dates. And this might not have to be something that's a permanent thing, but you need to go ahead and give yourself a break from whatever it is and whatever routine that you do and change it. You have to. That's the only way to break this. You have to stop that routine. You have to stop feeding 
those, those, those. Okay, so let me go ahead and start talking about these boundary areas, okay? Because you have to start creating your boundaries. You have to know your boundaries and stick to them, okay? So, if you go out and the guy likes to put his hands on the thighs, look, the top of the thigh and the outside of the thigh. He is not allowed to go nowhere near the vagina, okay? And don't fall for those guys that are like, okay, well, we're not gonna hook up, but can I just, can I just taste it? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't fall for that either, guys, okay? Because they gonna make sure that they give you the best taste that you've ever felt, okay? So that they can go ahead and go to step two. So don't put yourself in that, okay? Um, don't fall for the, can I just touch it either? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Touching leads to others, okay? You just gotta stop all that. No extra, well, let me just let him taste it a little bit because I ain't gonna hurt nobody. Because before you know it, you be. I just got the steam. Got the music on now. But I wanted to go ahead and continue more into uh, these relationships, um, these dating, and, you know, creating boundaries so that these uh, men are over something that affects ultimately your whole healing journey, right? So, whew, boundaries, okay? It is okay, ladies. It is absolutely okay to create these boundaries and to put in place certain areas that you are not allowing other people to go, okay? So, when you're on these dates, be careful on how that man is hugging you. Okay, if he's hugging you past the middle of your back and his hands is going further, you need to stop that. You need to cut it. Also, you know, um, at the beginning of your, your dating stages, you know, don't even open up to like kissing, you know? I mean, these things create more. Tongue kissing, it goes too far. Maybe a nice kiss on the lip if you're really, really into that person. But it should not go past that. It should not go past that. Be mindful of the touching, like I said, all over your body. That is, no, it, it needs to be little to no touch. Be careful if a man rubs you right in the palm of your hand. Like, don't don't allow that either. Okay? Keep them from touching the middle in the palm of your hand. Okay? Um, you know, you have to just wholeheartedly protect your boundaries. You know, don't let them go into places that's going to get you hot and bothered. Feel hot and bothered, and then you need to pull back tremendously. Okay, don't go places with them. Don't do it. there's no cuddling, there's no Netflix and chilling. Okay, none of that. Get to know each other and then proceed more. But even still, just know you proceed more, you have higher chances of breaking your settlements. Okay. So don't get yourself in those situations. Just don't. Be excited, be hot and bothered, but that's it, you know. You have to really get to a place of understanding the difference between love, like, and lust. And most people, and most of us, are operating from lust. We can go around somebody and feel hot and bothered and be like, oh, wow, you are so sexy, I'm so attracted to you. But it's literally lust. You don't really like that person and you show them love, you know? So be mindful in understanding the difference and understand that lust is literally a spirit. It is a Jezebel spirit. It is a spirit that wants you to just hump. So I want to just kind of just dive you guys into this whole lust thing, you know? Because a lot of people are really suffering from lust. It is literally all about lust, okay? And that type of spirit on you just makes you... Sorry, I got a phone call. But the lusting, it literally just makes you want to just hump. That's it, you know? And once you get that attached to you, that spirit attached to you, it's just an ongoing thing, you know, and that's honestly what a lot of people are just dealing with. They have not removed those soul ties. They have not removed that Jezebel spirit. They have not removed that lusty spirit. Once that lusty spirit is off of you, then you're not hot and bothered and going crazy for every human being that walks past you. You literally don't. 
Okay, so I have to go ahead and come in and start getting ready. So, back to story time. Um, yes, so don't put yourself into those places where you will get welcome. Don't do that. Be careful on the dates, set your boundaries, and don't let them get in there, okay? Um, you know, I, I people throw this Jezebel spirit thing around a lot, you know, and people don't really understand what it is and what it means. Um, and so I kind of just gave you a glimpse of it and just share with you that it is a place where you feel really lusty, you know, and you just want to hump, you know, you just want to hump on anything and anybody in any situation in the place. You know, I've met people where they're like, oh, I have to have sex every day. I'm like, that is a lusty spirit on you. If that is not your husband or your wife that makes you feel like that, what are you doing? And you're just humping on anybody? So a lot of people like to, um, you know, act like having sex with people is just okay. It's not, guys. I mean, casual sex with just anybody is insanity, okay? Um, one, you don't even know what that other person that you're connecting with energy is like. Do they have positive energy or do they have negative energy? Because now you hooked up with them, do you feel drained after you hooked up with them or do you feel enlightened and feel like you want to take over the world? Um, you know, you, 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 you have to meet people and know them to figure out if that's what you're going to get out of that situation um but so many people are gambling every day and they're sleeping with people who are sleeping with a lot of people and so maybe you might have just one other sexual partner or maybe two sexual partners but you don't know how many other partners those other sexual partners have so if one other person has 10 or 20 and then the other one has 30 now you sleeping with 40 50 people and then people are sleeping with 40 to 50 different people. And they're like, well, I just have only one sexual partner. And, you know, I'm married. And, you know, God forbid those people who are married and stepping out of marriages and sleeping with that one other person that they think is just sleeping with them. While that other person literally has 40 or 50 other people that they're actually sleeping with. And maybe they might only just be sleeping with you, but maybe they're sleeping with one other person too besides you. And that other person has 40, 50 people. And now you're taking that back to your beautiful little marriage. And now y'all have problems. And you're wondering why do we have problems? Why are we fighting? Why are we going back and forth at it? Why do I not feel comfortable over here? Why do I not feel comfortable with you over here? Well, guess what? Whoever decided to step out brought back all 50 of them spirits and personalities and energy. And now y'all acting weird. And you wonder why there's so many uh, problems in failed marriages. Hmm, let me tell you. Yep, yeah, it starts right there. Folks stepping out. Mm-hmm, that's exactly how it happened. And then I love the men that, the men that be like, every man cheats, you know. You know, you know, we all cheat and everything. And that's why all y'all marriages don't work. <laughs> that's why we got a 80% failed marriage because y'all think just getting y'all dangling wet in another hole is not that bad but you don't factor in the fact that baby girl is crazy you didn't factor in baby girl got psychological problems you didn't factor in baby girl might not be clean you didn't factor in baby girl got some issues and now you're about to take it back to your house can i get an amen just saying i'm just saying y'all gotta start looking at this this marriage and relationship thing as more than just we, you know, uh, we just having fun. Because y'all one out of fun can end up in a one magical, miserable life ahead for that one night of fun. Them kids gonna be missing you because y'all about to break up and be out the house. God forbid there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a nasty disease that's picked up. Because that honestly is probably the worst. But I mean, what else could be the worst? Ooh, another extra baby that is out of wedlock that was not made in that home. Mm. Woo! But we're not going to go too deep in this today. I don't want to have to ruffle too many feathers. But back to the uh, 
message at hand about so that's here because I feel like you know we gotta practice still a bit see I think we need to come up with a single celibacy version and we gotta come up with a marriage celibacy version because it's too much stuff going on. It's too many things that's out of hand and we, 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 we can't, we can't, we can't be having that. We can't be having all these out of hand things, okay? Marriage should be a union between a man and a woman, you and that man. Now, anything else outside of that, y'all gotta take that with God because I'm not in it, okay? But I know what the Lord told me. And I know what I live by. And that's it. Anything else, y'all go ahead and do that on your own. And you deal with your own consequences and repercussions of it. But I'm telling you right now, that's how it's supposed to go. Okay? All right. Okay, now I went ahead and had, and I got my Bible. You know what I'm saying, real quick. Because the Lord sent me to this. So I want y'all to know it's real. I'm not just making up this stuff in my head because I decided it was a good day to talk about this. No. So 1 Corinthians 7 and 8 is where he sent me. Okay, it's about celibacy, a vow of abstinence. To be celibate is to refrain from sexual intercourse. Such a behavior is also considered the will of believer. To live in purity is a personal obligation to obey fully the commandments of the Lord. Okay. And Paul advises those who have sexual desires to marry rather than to burn with passion. Burn with passion is lust. That's exactly what it means. Lust. In order to stop lusting and burning with passion and wanting to hump on somebody, you need to get married so you can hump on him or her. I'm trying to keep this PG-13. But um, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not supposed to be humping on everybody. You're supposed to just find one person and have a very good... And speaking of having a very good time with one person, you know, I just want to be able to just tell you what it means. So it says the unmarried woman cared for the things of the Lord, which means that your vow, whether you're a man or a woman, should be only to the Lord and committed to like what God tells you to do with your life. Live your best Lord-led life, okay? But if that person is to be married, then she should work on and focus on how she may please her husband and vice versa. He should focus on how he may please his wife. It literally says that. It literally says please her husband. So that means for the five, one person that you can do all your most craziest, wildest, freakiest, nastiest stuff with. One person. Not 10, 20, 40, 100 of y'all. Jesus. Some of y'all be eating truffle butter from folks y'all don't even know. Exchanging all those bodily fluids. I'm sorry. I'm grossed the fuck out right now. Give me a moment. marks in their drawers and stuff and I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna go there them folks ain't them parents ain't taught them how to do things right right and then they grow up and they don't do it right and then the women lord I don't been around a lot of women and you go to their house and you see they only got a bar of soap in the shower I mean I'm glad they got a bar of soap but that's it you ain't got no body wash you ain't got no scrubs you ain't got no what you what you cleaning? Is it getting it good? Like but y'all truffle. But anyway, I'm gonna let y'all truffle on. Okay? 
this message isn't for the people that like truffles and likes to truffle along with everybody else. But please don't get near me. And see, that's the thing, you know what I'm saying? Them same folks that be truffle, eating truffles and all kinds of other stuff, you want to come around and get in your face and be trying to kiss on you. Mm -mm. Don't come over here trying to kiss me with them lips. Where them lips be? No, no. Another reason why I live a celibate life, y'all. You can't touch me with a 10 foot pole these days. Cause y'all doing everything underneath the sun with everybody. Now that was just your husband and your wife. She can turn up. She can turn all the way up, okay? There should be no limit to y'all thing, whatever is y'all thing. Mm, but y'all living married lives with single folk. I just wanna say, like, y'all really doing things that you're supposed to do in a marriage with everybody. What are y'all leaving for your significant other? Like really, even men, y'all think that y'all can have a bunch of women and think that that stuff is cute. I'm sorry. I am not attracted or interested in a man that has slept with a million different women. I'm sorry. I don't want no wore out, beat down, ran through, uh, penis. Cause that's what ended up happening after you don't use it all up. And then you're gonna bring it over here to me and want me to work extra hard to get it to stand up. Not happening. That's not happening. Y'all need to go ahead and control y'all thing too. And then women, y'all thing be loose as a goose. I'm telling you, look like a big old pastrami sandwich just popped up on your body. Just hanging everywhere. You know, but anyway, y'all can't have this conversation with y'all wife because y'all don't know how to be transparent. A lot of y'all married into situations that ain't even based on truth. You over here like to get your booty played with. And you want to touch your wife. But you got married today. And you said, okay, I'm married her, have kids, and have this happy little family, and keep this little side thing a little secret. And me and my friends and coworkers and homeboys, we'll just go ahead and take boy trips and have a good time. And my wife will never know. And then over time, you get turned out, and then all of a sudden, you divorce in her in the next 10 years and leaving those kids at home while they're like 13, 14. Now the kid's about to go crazy because their daddy about to be in the house. And it's because you want to go move in with Steve because now Steve don't turn you out. I didn't want to do this today. I said I wasn't going to do this today. I said I'm going to keep this PG-13. It's been everything but that, okay? Look. Somebody gotta say it, cause it's so much going on and people are afraid to really talk about the elephant in the room. Okay, I, I was supposed to talk about celibacy, but here we are, okay? My Bible's open on celibacy. The Lord said talk about celibacy today and I don't know how we got on all this other stuff, but I guess it needed to be set. that we have got to pull back and really start evaluating how we are extending our sexual energy, our sexual power, our sexual everything, and understanding how it is affecting our life in a whole. This is grown folks talk, okay? But this is also for young folks, okay? Because young folks, because young folks is doing all kinds of stuff too now. But they in a more tougher space because I feel like when we were growing up, I mean, I'm a little bit in the older section, I don't know about y'all. But, you know, we actually had sex ed. We actually had DARE, you know, drug abuse resistant education. They came out, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, you see how you remember, you know, I knew that hell about that right there. That's how serious it was back in the day. We knew what that was. But these kids today, they don't know any of that. They don't get no sex talks, there's no, uh, you know, practice sex talk there's no passing out condoms at school there's no talking about it you know giving out tampons and you know all these type of things used to come in the mail to us we should have be informed we used to have that whole class when you sit down you got to look at all the stds and you, got to, you know we were shocked we was like okay we don't want that but they don't do that these days they're not doing that these days these kids don't get none of that they have to figure it out on their own they ain't got nobody telling them nothing 
And then y'all grown folks that be knowing better, y'all don't be talking to these kids either. Y'all don't be telling these teenagers, y'all don't be telling them what's going on, y'all be telling them what's up. And then let's not talk about the music. We got little Nas X coming down from, you know, stripper poles and, 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 and a whole cluster of uh, uh, men in pink uh, 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 jailhouse clothes twerking on the stage. There's like 20 of them niggas. And then him in the middle with some old, you're not even gonna get into it, okay? Outfit. Oh, um, and he just singing the song and they just twerking. And none of that says drug abuse resistant education. That shit says do all the drugs and hump everybody. Is that what it says? Okay? That's not helping our babies. That's not helping these kids. That's not. You got songs like Truffle Butter. That's wrong, folks. They can relate. But they don't need to relate to that. And then they doing trouble butter as teenagers. <sighs> you know them booties ain't clean. You know the booties ain't clean. They ain't really doing you. Y'all remember what it was like when y'all was in junior high, high school? You know the boys always wanna put their hands in the cookie jar and they be having Cheetos on they stuck on their fingers, right? And funions and, and they wanted to, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, y'all. This stuff is out of control, man. And they doing, they practice in truck bus. And they doing orgies and all kinds of other stuff. Why? Because of the TV, the music, and everything they say they doing it. My girlfriend got a girlfriend. And all this other stuff. And they literally reacting to that. But they in high school, in elementary, and junior high. Ain't nobody telling them that they could get sick from this stuff. Ain't nobody sharing with them that your life could be... Ain't nobody telling them that they can play around and end up with some stuff that they can't get rid of for the rest of their life. Ain't nobody telling them they can end up with some stuff that they can be messed up with for the next few months. Ain't nobody telling them that they can end up with some stuff that people gonna try to hold over their head and try to talk them with. And make fun of them with. Ain't nobody telling them that. Ain't nobody telling them that some of the stuff they get can not only affect them, but the baby that they might be carrying. Ain't nobody telling them that the stuff they get can not only affect them, but their actual reproductive system, their actual vagina, their actual penis, their actual eggs, their actual sperm. Because people think, oh, only women can have retarded babies. I'm sorry, I'm always even tired, but special babies. I mean, special or disabled, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. Don't try to, don't be trying, don't be trying to do any of that with this video. Just being real, being transparent because ain't nobody else. Ain't nobody else. I have yet to see any of these talk show hosts, Jennifer Hudson, Oprah, Ellen DeGeneres, uh, The Real, well, I don't even keep it with TV no more, so I don't know what's on, what's, what's the topic of whatever. But I ain't seen none of them talk about these conversations. But anyway, anybody telling them babies that, and then people think that, oh, only women who have eggs are the ones that's producing children with difficulties. Oh, she was drinking, she was smoking, and she was doing this and that, and like, baby. No, y'all don't talk about these men now. These men be having some old jacked up sperm too now. They be out here living however, eating however, drinking however, smoking however, and then put some sperm up in you. And you think it's a good sperm. And you think it is not damaged. Root. You know, it's a whole lot of one-sidedness going on in this, this, this society, this world. Where everything is always on. Put on the woman. The woman this. The woman that. Let me bring it back. Because y'all like to talk about, oh, well, you know, you wouldn't be carrying a man. I mean, carrying a child if it wasn't for a man, you know, who actually held the sperm for such and such years, you know. You guys like to get your little, uh... <laughs> chest pumped out because you know you got to put some sperm in somebody for a few minutes and you think you just um did some miraculousness things whenever the woman has to carry that baby for nine months but anyway so since you want to go ahead and pump your chest out let's go ahead and talk about the chest pumped out how is that sperm is it good is it healthy have you lived a healthy lifestyle have you been working out and not sitting at home playing video games eating cheetos <laughs> you're gonna put your cheeto sperm inside of me <laughs> Let me hope I have a good baby. Pump your chest out now. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be 
taking none of y'all to church, or giving nobody some spankings today, but you know what? Somebody got to do it, okay? I'm tired of these church congregations coming together and not talking about some real stuff, okay? We can talk about the Lord blessing us and all that all day. But we got a real life issue going on around here. And we can put on these cute little uh, outfits and lace fronts and makeup and, 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 you know, and get in front of a stage on a podium with our little Bibles and little, our little laptops and stuff. We can do all that. We can get the presentation and everything. But what we're not talking about what's really happening. We too afraid. Oh, we got to put some red tape right there. Oh, that might be too much. We don't want to talk about that. That will be going against it. Then everybody going to be mad at us. Oh, we might lose our government funding. I don't want to say that. Or I might use, look, you know what? But people are dying. We got people hurting. We got babies out here. Messed up. Because we're not doing our part as adults and being more transparent about what's really going on. We just throwing them out there. And the ones of us that know better, we ain't, we sure ain't saying nothing. And heck, it took me to get to this point to start saying something. It took for God to tell me, this is what I want you to do. And me even in the moments of him showing me what he wanted me to talk about today, which is so that see, and me being like, really? Why do I Dang! I gotta take all the hard parts. Can't nobody else do the hard stuff. I gotta do it all. I tell you, I'm tired of having to have these conversations. <laughs> I, I, I gotta do it all. But I guess I'm the only one that has balls around here. Not literal balls, I'm having balls. It's, 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 it's a vagina, guys. I'm really a girl, okay? But I'm just saying, speaking metaphorically, I gotta have balls. I have the most balls out here to be able to say and talk about these things that people are literally afraid to talk about. I don't understand how we're even afraid. It's happening. What are we afraid of? It's already here. This stuff is happening right now. What we hiding for? You literally got folks that like to have sex with the same sex going into schools talk about butt plugs. But we can't talk about this without ruffling some feathers. I'm just saying. We burp, booping out cuss words. We, we, we block it and putting up a, a, this might be misinformation or some stuff on Instagrams. And, you know, we got to get approval from YouTube and things like that. But we have people who are liking to have the same sex and put on drag queen makeup and outfits and go to schools and read books and talk to kids about the plugs and how it's done and how they should do it. And, you know, the newest trend is you we got them trying out tampons. But that is okay. That's not censored. That's not considered ridiculous. That's not considered doing too much. That's not considered... Um, we're going too far but this is us talking about God telling us to live a more celibate life and to get our sexual thing together because all we're doing is harlots that's all we're doing holes everywhere I'm just saying there's holes everywhere I'm over here saying who let the holes out who 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 let the holes out that's all we're doing because I mean I'm just saying everybody ho. Everybody, everybody turn up, everybody turn up with everybody. I mean, it's people that I'm even like, I'm in shock, like, what, girl, what, what, what? I never would've thought, I never would've imagined, never would've known. Hold on, we, we, we hold his laugh. When Amber Rose came out and said, hold his laugh, everybody said, okay. That's right, sis. <laughs> we wanna be a hoe. <laughs> And it's like, ever since then, who let the hoes out? Who, 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 who let the hoes out? Who, 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 how big of a hoe can you be? I don't even know. I feel like we don't get everything. Where else are we going to go? Where else can we go? I'm just saying, y'all. Y'all think this is a game. 
especially here in America. We have become the biggest harlot of all time. Everybody is losing their mind and doing too much. I would, I would let this go for the single folks, you know. But we literally got married folks figuring out ways to still be hoes too. Oh, we just live in a polygamy lifestyle, you know. Well, I'm just a man, you know, I just got about a couple wives. And then you got the women like, oh, I got a couple husbands. And, you know, we just got a few people that we hook up with. Or we just do swingers, you know. We just hook up with other couples and stuff like that. I'm sorry, y'all. It sounded all good and cute and everything. But y'all a hoe. I just want to let y'all know right now. Y'all hoes. I'm sorry, I'm offended for you folks. I'm sorry, I'm just had to do it for that day. I'm gonna just have to take the L. Y'all can just hate me. Add to the other extra thousand million people that don't like me too. I mean, what else am I supposed to do? I don't know. Can't can't help all y'all. Trying to, but can't help all y'all. So at least I'll help a few people that get what I'm saying and see what I'm seeing. Cause I know I ain't the only one seeing this. But it's gotten a little big, too crazy. It ain't make sense to me. I'm trying to understand where the union and the bond comes in. And uh, I'm just, I'm trying to see it. I'm trying to see it. And it's really hard to see these things when you can see clearly that people are not living right. They're just not. They're not. Let me go ahead and talk about this movie thing. You know, and I, you know, just let me talk about this look at me thing because <laughs> this is serious, y'all. Y'all gotta understand how serious this stuff is, okay? So, I have a friend that had a polygamy little relationship thing going on with him and his wife, and then they had a little side thing, you know what I'm saying? They had a whole little family, they was taking pictures together with the kid and everything in the photo. I said, Oh, you in the in the side girl. And the baby and the baby. Oh, y'all got a family. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> that went on for a good two years. Good two years. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's done. Hmm. Oh, yes. Did somebody find someone else a little bit more intriguing and spent a little bit more time outside of the three and then we just went two? Mm. Or did somebody start getting a little possessive? Mm. Or did the side piece decide to actually start, you know, having their own little thing outside of you guys? I don't know. I won't say too much because it ain't my business. But I am going to say... People's feelings get into certain things, you know, and it's a, it's one thing to have these little fun moments, but it's a whole other thing if some if feelings get involved and your husband's now loving on her more or her loving on you more or whatever. It's you know you breaking up your bond. Maybe a few, you know, one or two or a couple of hookups, but all the time, mm, don't seem healthy. Mm, it's a lot that I can say. But, you know, my time has gone way exceeded to the amount of time I was planning on talking about. So it does say today. And I have got to get dressed and get ready and finish doing the rest of my day, y'all. I love y'all. But I wanted to go ahead and tap into that and just tell you about kind of my whole little thing about the whole spew about celibacy and um, why it's important and uh, what's going on in our world, in our sexual world, and what we can do to make it better and how to live a celibate life. And if you want to know how and why I'm celibate, well, there you go. I just gave you every example of why. I sit my little hot and tidy, cute and nice and tight vagina down somewhere. Okay. Because saving that for my husband. You know what I'm saying? You know, I actually think it's important to leave things that's not been tempered with so that my husband can enjoy it. You know, because they don't... Today, everybody's just doing everything. 
like, you know, and they don't believe in leaving anything. You know, a lot of y'all is doing stuff that just, like, what is going to be left for your husband to explore? Or what is going to be left for your wife to explore? Like, you guys are literally doing all of these experiences and doing everything with people that you're never going to be with there. See you again. <laughs> what do you leave? Like, I want to feel like I got something special. That's another reason why these marriages don't work. Because y'all realize y'all ain't got nothing special. Y'all realize you just got another little piece of whatever. Me. You know? You, you women out here, y'all be letting these men just do whatever to y'all vagina. Y'all gotta stop that. Y'all gotta stop that. Stop letting these men have their way with you. And they ain't put no ring on your finger. And ain't committed to you. Y'all letting them just bust you down, bust you out. You know, you just letting them pull on stuff while they're eating. They just, you know, devouring and tearing up stuff, pulling, yanking your stuff all loose and your loosey goosey stuff hanging and sis come on now come on and again i already told you about the men y'all thing just be you know it be all it feel like a tether like a you know it just I, I can't even explain what it feels like but it just and it look it don't even it don't the blood is not flowing to it like it used to it's just there y'all we gotta do better we gotta really work on leaving something special for our husband for our, our union our wives we gotta we gotta really be better people in in our sexual department and stop just wearing stuff out and abusing it and tearing it up and then trying to give some old nasty toe up toe back garbage disposal i'm just saying i'm i'm really <laughs> i'm just saying i don't i don't heard and i don't seen enough over the years and I am legitimately tired of hearing about these failed marriages and, 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 and failed relationships and you know people not being happy and even hearing about mommies having to go get these mommy makeovers on their vagina and stuff like that y'all gotta start taking better care of y'all stuff are you doing your kegels especially after you have a baby before and after you have a baby because if you're doing it before then you'll be able to go ahead and push that baby out right you don't build the muscle down there and then after you know you're gonna be able to get it back tight like what are we doing y'all think it's just okay we just gonna tear it up and then we go back and fix it and go to surgeries and all this stuff and then you got people passing away from the surgeries come on y'all anyway i got so much i could say as y'all can tell and i feel like i want to dive in this a little bit more a little bit later in a different time but as of right now i gotta go but i just want to tell y'all man shut it down and start valuing your vagina and your penis more to me a person that goes around and sleeps around with everybody has no self-worth and i'm sorry i hate to say it to y'all but you don't have no self-worth and you literally value yourself on a scale of zero. Because if you value yourself on a scale of 10, there's no way you're going to let all these dusties that's under a five especially touch you. And y'all be doing it all the time. Y'all be entertaining it all the time. So I think we need to get to a place of starting to value who and what we have and start early, not late. Love y'all.